We have a very broad mission at the Greenwood Genetic Center, but it's basically to provide genetic services for the entire state of South Carolina, but it includes clinical services, diagnostic laboratory services, research in genetics, and also a broad education mission as well. So the Greenwood Genetic Center has had a long history being focused on intellectual disabilities, birth defects, and autism. This goes back to our, actually our origins as far as our relationship with the South Carolina Department of Disabilities and Special Needs. That state agency provides uh, services for individuals with intellectual disabilities, autism, and birth defects. Uh, the concept for the Genetic Center was really born at Johns Hopkins Hospital in the early 70s. Uh, Dr. Harold Taylor and I, uh, both fellows at Johns Hopkins at the time, uh, conceived of the idea of developing a sophisticated genetic center that uh, would bring compassionate services to patients. And of course, we wanted that uh, center to be located somewhere in the southeast. We would not be here except for the uh, philanthropy of a Greenwood businessman, uh, Mr. Jim Self. Mr. Jim Self was a textile businessman and we had the opportunity early in our development phase of being introduced to Mr. Self. Dr. Stevenson came and pitched his idea to my grandfather about a genetic center to, to do research on human genetics and, and eliminate birth defects. We have our main campus here in Greenwood, South Carolina, but we also have satellite offices in each of the major cities, including Greenville, Columbia, Florence, and Charleston. We see um, a variety of patients, including pediatric patients, adult patients, as well as uh, patients that have needs for prenatal or cancer genetics. We became involved when Charlie was born. He was diagnosed when he was five days old. Um, we were actually contacted by our pediatrician who, after the heel prick test, had called us to say that they wanted us to go back to the hospital just for some numbers that were a little high. Charlie had um, a very rare metabolic disorder called isovaleric acidemia. The metabolic treatment program um, was initiated in 2004. It consists of 10 members, um, including nutritionists, um, psychologists, counselors, and physicians. And we see uh, patients in follow-up to newborn screening and provide services across the lifetime uh, of these patients. We meet, meet with the team. Uh, we call them Charlie's Angels because they're all his girls. And when we meet with them, they take time just to talk to me, to understand how, how's mom doing? Or it's not, how's dad doing? How are y'all as a family doing? And, and with Charlie, um, so that's how they've supported us. We're not alone in this. Um, as I mentioned, it was very difficult to understand that. But everybody from Dr. Champagne to the couriers who take his blood from Greenville and bring it down here to Greenwood, to the nutritionists, to all of the people who are behind the scenes that we never see, that's how we're supported. And I think when she said we're never alone, we, we aren't alone. We've never felt alone in this, even though his is a very rare condition. He's the only child in the state of South Carolina that has this. We have committed ourselves to being uh, at the forefront and a leader for transitioning genetics into the realm of treatment of genetic disorders. For the longest time, genetics could diagnose and provide information uh, about a genetic disorder, but we couldn't change the outcome. Uh, well, being a biochemical geneticist where we are able to provide treatments to our patients is very rewarding and satisfying. Um, in years past, patients would get a diagnosis and not have a significant difference or impact. Now we can offer life-altering treatments and uh, that helps families tremendously. Well, the, the goals of the diagnostic laboratories are to provide diagnoses and answers to families that are struggling to find answers for what may be happening um, at the genetic level with, with their family. The motto in the diagnostic laboratories is giving greater care and so our, our real responsibility and job is to, to help find answers and, and to do that we use a lot of the, the newest technologies available at our disposal. 
The, the diagnostic laboratory is really made up of three sections. The, the first section is the cytogenetic laboratory where most of the work is looking at changes in chromosome structure and numbers. Um, we use both traditional means as well as newer um, technologies to do that using things like microarray. The next section is the DNA laboratory where we look at DNA changes, specific DNA sequence changes, and we can do that at single gene levels as well as multi-gene levels as well as using tests such as whole exome sequencing to look at all 20,000 genes simultaneously. And then the third section is the biochemistry laboratory, the biochemical lab, and that section primarily looks at small molecules, proteins, and enzymes to, to look functionally at what may be going on as well as helping to, to monitor certain treatment modalities. Well, we have a number of outreach programs um, targeting our student population. We do this through our uh, mobile science lab, which travels throughout the state of South Carolina. We have our on-site um, genetic education center in which schools can make field trips here to participate in the activities that we offer. The Gene Machine is designed to uh, work with uh, middle school students and high school students. We travel throughout the state. We work with all types and levels of classes and students. And our intent is to introduce students into the various careers that are available in the life sciences. We also introduce them to technologies, use of equipment, and um, how, this is, how what we do with them on that day of a visit is truly applicable to future workforce. In 1991, uh, Centers for Disease Control was real concerned about what was going on in South Carolina. We had twice the national average of babies born with birth defects of the brain and spine, neural tube defects. And we've been educating women about the importance of taking folic acid before they get pregnant and during their pregnancy. And as a result, our birth defects, instead of being twice the national average, our rates have actually been reduced by over 60%. Our program has now become a model program for other states to follow. Since 1990, we have been primarily focused on genes on the X chromosome that uh, cause intellectual disability. Uh, presently, there are about 120 genes that have been identified that cause X-linked intellectual disability. And I can say that uh, the GGC has been responsible for identifying one-third to one-fourth of the genes. We've identified a biochemical change in cells from patients with autism and this uh, may allow us to develop a blood test to use for patients that are suspected of having autism and allow us to make a diagnosis early. That uh, early diagnosis will allow uh, earlier intervention and treatment of such patients. The uh, Greenwood-Clemson collaboration came into being about 10 years ago and uh, it's finally coming to fruition with the building of a building here on the campus of the Greenwood Genetics Center and the hiring of the self-chair in human genetics and uh, three, un three or four other individuals. The hope of the people here at the Greenwood Genetics Center that the addition of these researchers will increase the critical mass of research that's critical for really addressing the issues of intellectual disability, autism, and birth defects. Our vision and our goal is that we want to be at the forefront of using genetic information, technology, and knowledge to actually change outcomes for the lives of those that we care, so we change their lives for the, for, for the better.